division of land resource. Should I start again? Yeah, okay. we, we should start again. Okay. Hi, hi guys. It's been a while since I'm back in the studio, so bear with us. Um, I moved, and it's been two years since I moved to Los Angeles to Northern California. A lot of people have been asking me why I moved. Uh, well, I have family up here, and I had some health issues, but I'm back in the studio um, doing podcasting, which I love. It's going on 12 years since I did podcasting, and so I got my friend Kay Lee. He's an executive director from Department of Conservation, and he's going to tell us what he does for Department of Conservation. So, Kay Lee, take it away. Thank you so much, Michelle, um, and it's been just a real pleasure to have you here at the department. Um, my name, again, my name is Kay Lee Bright. I am the um, actually the assistant director here um, at the department for the Division of Land Resource Protection. Um, and we do a whole bunch of things, but I think the easiest way to summarize that is we do a lot of work to protect um, the agricultural lands and the forested lands um, that you all, um, you know, appreciate and and hold valuable across the state. Um, our job here is to is to try to make those lands be healthy, um, strong, and then put them in, in into different kinds of protection. Um, mechanisms that they're here for generations to come. So the biggest question is, are we out of a drought? A lot of people are asking that question right now because of the recent rainstorms that we had. It's a very timely question. So <laughs> there's a lot of water across the state. There's a lot of water in our reservoirs and our snowpack. Um, but one of the biggest challenges with the state is that we also rely a lot on water that's underground. And over the last few years of the drought, we have been pumping a whole lot of water out of the ground. And it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of deliberate effort to um, get that water banked back into the ground so that when we hit these droughts. So the short answer is, I'd say, yeah, we're out of the drought. But there's a whole lot of work we need to do to to, to shore up our, 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 bank, our water bank accounts underground so that, you know, when we hit bad droughts in the future will be in a better shape. They were talking about the 100-year flood, which was supposed to happen last year. It seems to be happening this year. And I heard that we are getting more rain. Recently, we just had a tornado in Term Lock, I think it was, or someplace. But it's just been, this weather's been so crazy. We saw snow, we saw hail, uh, lightning, tornadoes. Is this part of global warming? That's my question. So the scientists will always have to be cautious to say that weather does not equate, you know, there is not a direct relationship between the weather of the day or the week and, and climate change or global warming. But what we are seeing is just these these trends and these patterns are changing pretty dramatically. Um, we're seeing temperatures higher, even though it's been a cold year. I can pretty much guarantee that at the end of the year, we're going to see higher average temperatures this year than last year and the year before. So we're seeing that change over time of of our climate. And then what we're also seeing are just much more much more um, powerful and se like sequential atmospheric river storms coming into California that are just, you know, they've been relentless this year. And they, um, see, I always joke with my friend and I always say, oh, we, we have – bipolar weather in california sometimes it's hot sometimes it's cold you know today we have a beautiful sky out in there it's like beautiful and then next week we're gonna get more rain so it's like you know we're getting a hit with the back east weather going on so it's like what's going on um uh, my next question is do you see more fires in the summer because of all the rain that's going to be happening it's a really good question um the rain does you know it's gonna it, it the rain will make um will grow a lot more because the rain will see a lot more vegetation grow this summer and if we see that vegetation dry out um there's a lot more fuel for fires so um we're always looking to see how the wind you know for fire wind and fuel are the two main drivers and you know if a fire happens and there's not a lot of wind we're pretty good at managing that fire but if the big winds pick up then it's a lot harder to manage those fires and um 
you know, you never can, I'm not a, I'm not a fire almanac. So I can't <laughs> say what's going to happen, but I think, you know, we're always watching and yeah. there's always risk. This is actually my first time in a long time. I've seen this crazy weather back in LA. I think it was 1989. That's when we had snow for the first time in oh. LA, actually in Torrance. And it just snowed enough for the ground. So that was the last time we had this crazy weather. But my aunts and my, my family says it gets crazy up here in Northern California. And I didn't believe you guys for a minute because, hey, I wear short. Well, I don't wear shorts all the time. But you go to L.A., you can wear flip-flops. You can wear Crocs. You can wear all kinds of shoes. And when you get up here, you got to wear your boots. You got to put double, triple layers on. And I'm like, I'm not used to this. So, <laughs> And it, it's kind of weird because what I'm saying is, you don't know what Mother Nature is going to predict. You don't know who she's bad at. So, again, that's why I said it's bipolar. <laughs> it is bipolar, and it's just getting a lot more, you know. I One thing I've noticed this year is that the winds, you know, I grew up in Sacramento. I've seen the different weather patterns. We get a lot of rain um, in some years, but we've never, I've never seen the types of winds we've been getting, you know, and it's just really, really tough weather that, that is different than prior years. So, I'm not. I'm an amateur weather observer. I'm not a scientist, but I I do see something. Oh, uh, you see? Are you kidding? Back home in LA, they're like they're not used to it. And they're they're wearing shorts. They're wearing tank tops, but, and all of a sudden, it's... yeah. But Southern California, you all are really you all are really used to the winds. Oh, know. we yeah, we get the Santa Ana winds. That was like something different. They're different, and but you know we're not used to wind up here like you guys are. <laughs> so we're we're swapping our you know, our, our, our bad weather. <laughs> yeah. With the Santa Ana winds, you get, it's very dry. And that's when the fire season hits, especially if yeah. you're in Ventura or Oxnard. It's just really bad. And especially I think it happens in February and in August mostly. So that's when it's really hot and dry. And they're not used to the, the uh, weather that we're getting up here. So my friends are sending me pictures of the Hollywood sign with all the snow and Disneyland got snow for the first time. And then uh, somebody saying, no, it's not snow. It's hail. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and then I was walking to the, I was coming from the bus stop the other day or about a couple of weeks ago when we had that big uh, powerful storm the first time we had it. I saw snow on the ground. I'm like, hey, what's that white stuff? That's never happened before. I've never, you know. Because like you said, Southern California, beaches, hot sun, you wear your tank tops, you know, 55 degrees. That's cold for us. <laughs> yeah, but not this year. Not this year. It's, it's, um, you know, thankfully people are starting to get, you know, people are stuck in the snow in the mountains in Southern California. And thankfully that's starting to get better. But it's been a tough year for, for the whole state. Yeah, they have earthquakes. They had a swarm of earthquakes in the California and Nevada. I've been seeing that. And that's another thing that we uh, in the Department of Conservation is we look out for um, earthquakes, wildfires, uh, landslides, abandoned mines. Um, what else do we look out for? I mean, we, you know, what I love about working here is we we cover the whole state with a, with a group of really interesting program areas. We regulate oil and gas. Um oil and gas wells we um, are the states we produce all of the information around earthquakes tsunamis volcanoes any natural hazard um, we are the ones watching the hillsides during these storms to see if we're going to have landslides and and giving people the warnings to get them to safe places we do a ton of work on helping um, the state prepare for like strengthen their defenses against wildfire and helping those communities get ready for, you know, wildfire resilience. Um, we regulate mining, Do we help close abandoned mines that are dangerous to the public. Um, we do a whole bunch of different mapping, really, you know, super, super high level technical mapping. Um, I don't know. We have a fleet <laughs> of Jeeps and off-road like vehicles. People go out into the field and have a great time and I think there's a there's a lot of the you know a lot of the staff here at the department spend their entire careers here and just really enjoy the 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 work and the the community and it's just it's a great place to work. It is a fun place to work at, and you get to see all the kind of crazy weather we have on the 19th floor. And I, I you know, I send pictures to my family, and I send pictures to the mirror, you know, to see the American River. I'm like, wow, 
um, I was taking the bus the other day, for example, on the freeway, and I saw Discovery Park flooded. It was coming up. I'm like, I've never seen that. Uh, we had a sinkhole in Le- uh, Rockland. Not that bad, but it was just enough, just enough to, you know, they, they close yep. it out for a few days, and yeah. So well, Discovery and Discovery Park. I mean, what? So in Sacramento, where the Natural Resources Building is, where we are, from our office, you can see the Sacramento River that carries the water from northern California all the way down here. But we're at the confluence of the American River as well, which is bringing the the water from the Sierra Nevadas kind of up Highway 80 and Highway 50. So we're like right at that point where all of it comes together. And we can see it all from our window. That just it looks like a an inland sea right now. If you look <laughs> out from my window, it's pretty neat. Uh, yeah, I can see it. In fact, I, my dad wanted to see the picture of it because he said he's like southern, he's a like Southern California boy too, native California, lived there all his life. And then when he comes up, he he wears shorts in this weather for crying out loud. So he there you go. My dad wears shorts. Happy birthday, dad! So he wears shorts all the time. It comes up here in this weather when it's raining. He took out his shirt on yesterday. So he's, you know, got his Hawaiian shirt on. He's, he, I told you, California dude. So <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you. So when the Southern California guys come up here, they're wearing shorts. They, they're not, eh, I'm not going to wear pants. Well, they're also, and they're also wearing, um, you know, jerseys from the Lakers or from the Dodgers that don't get a lot of love up here either. You know, we... shh, shh, we're Dodger fans. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, they're actually USA and USA baseball's playing right now. So Ooh. yeah. I'm, I'm a big I'm a big Kings fan. So, you know, we're we're we first talk... time in a long time we're doing well. We don't talk about the 49ers. I might get uh... hit ah, so <laughs> see my mom my mom is a Patriot fan, so She's always been from New England. She liked Patriots, but she's got her love for Dodgers. When she first came out here, she was in love for uh, Cincinnati Reds, and then all of a sudden, she became a Dodger fan. So we've been, yeah. One of the the greatest things of why I even came into broadcasting, Kaylee, is some of the greatest role models that I had growing up as a kid. I had, I had Vince Scully, one of the best. I had. Uh, Rick Dees in the morning, one of the best. Uh, Dick Clark, one of the best. DJs, even Wolfgang Puck. I know I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, I have Gary Bryan, Karen 101. And I have all these, you know, Laura Scott, another one. I have all these wonderful, um, you know, that's why I wanted to become a broadcaster. And I love doing radio. I started doing this when I was 12 years old. And the reason why I did this is because I got diagnosed with a chromosome called 22Q11, it's a tiny piece of a chromosome. You can see my logo in the back. There it is. So it has over 200 symptoms. It's got a heart condition, learning disability, teething, and all this stuff. And then back then, not a lot of people know about it. So how it came out, I got test. I had to take a genetic testing to show cause that I have a disability for SSI because SSI didn't see that I had it. So the test is called FISH, F-I-S-H-E. Anybody can get it. And so my parents don't have 22Q11. I got it by accident. So, you know, we're trying to raise awareness about 22Q. And so along the way, I've met some wonderful people. And then shout out to one of the... uh, B. Harold Hall, he was so fantastic. He gave me all the celebrities. So we had Don Wells, we had Loretta Swift, we had Dean uh, Wallace from E.T. You know, we've had all these, you're trying to remember who Dean Wallace is. She was the mother who played, yeah. So we have all these celebrities, and then we have Roxy from Glow Wrestling, and so, and then Jerry from The Flax Live. And they all had different causes and events. So this is basically our topic. Our show is about different causes and events and resources that we are trying to get to the people of California. We're going to open it up a little bit more. I want to get more resources for you guys. So we're going to get more people talking about Department of Conservation, what they do, and other resources that we can insist you guys on doing that. And then a couple of announcements we have this weekend. We have St. Patty's Day tomorrow, so I hope you guys were green. 
And then I've been informed that they're having the festival here for St. Patrick's Day on March 18th instead of the 17th. I don't know why. <laughs> Crazy. And then we're going to give a shout out to Maxie Rodriguez, our graphic designer. She is going to be at the Latin uh, Comic Con this weekend in Modesto. Check her out. She's also going to WandaCon and Comic Con. And we have shops online. You can follow us on YouTube. Kaylee, is there, is there a way they could get a hold of you? Yeah, I can um, I can be reached um, with my email address or my phone number or through you, I don't, whatever the best way to share my information or through our, our department's website where you can learn more about our work. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm listed there as well. So, so we're yeah, going to have another in- connect with whoever. However, we're going to have another interview with Kaylin because he's got so much information to talk about from Department of Conservation. Like it's like we said, we have a lot going on. It's a lot of fun working here. Um, I'm here nine months now, so I got lucky. Um, so yeah, we 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 talk about a lot of uh, resources. So we want to make sure you guys know that for people with oh, I have a question for people with disabilities. How do they handle the, the storms in this type of situation? What can they do to prepare? You know, I, I probably am, am not the best person, but from <laughs> the little I know, I think, you know, usually those responses go through their county emergency response. Um, and, and some counties are better than others at, at, at servicing people with disabilities yeah. in the storm. So I think that's something people should watch. And if they see any, any gaps in service, they should, you know, raise their voices and make those heard. Yeah, the, not enough for us to, not enough resources available to us. So that's where, you know, it, it lies there. And, you know, like I said, that is one of the main goals I have for the show. I want to make more visible for people to understand the resources that we have in California, not just p- people with disabilities, but for all Col- Californians. Because I think there's so many resources, liable resources we have out here people don't know about. It. I didn't even know what Department of Conservation was. <laughs> I got the call the day before my interview and I had to look it up and I'm like, oh, so that's what we do. <laughs> so, no, I'm I'm always I'm always out there trying to talk about what we do because we're we're kind of in the background of a lot of different things. Um one one example is we were just we were just at a big meeting of tribal governments um with the state and we were talking about how our programs can help tribes purchase land for kind of repurchase get acquire lands for their tribes and Nobody had heard about our programs, but we have really big opportunities to help them develop the ability to the, to kind of bring lands back to their tribes that they had lost over the years. And it's just a matter of sharing them in forums like this and all the other stuff we do is really, it's really well, good. Well, if nobody heard of them, you came to the right show. All you have to do is just ask. <laughs> uh, I, I I tell on you, I'm. I'm learning so much about these the resources that we have up here. We're in a new building, and you know it's a lot of fun. They have a lot of science events there, um, you know, so it's a lot of fun. Like Kaylee says, we're trying to get the uh, Department of Conservation more noticeable, more recognizable, and hopefully you guys can understand what we do. So you know, we we try to take care of California as much as we can because we love California and we want to save it. So. Guys, bundle up next week is going to be another wet one, more crazy weather. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get any more snow. Grass Valley has snow going on. I talked to my cousin. She said they were out of power for a couple hours. You know, they were still out of power. So I've I've never seen a bat like this before. Have you seen it like this before, Kaylee? No, I have not. We had staff that live not far up the hill that were stuck in their houses for multiple days. And um, I'm just happy I live near, you know, near the downtown area. I've had power <laughs> and I've had no snow and it's been, it's been trouble free, but yes. I, you know. and Kaylee is one of the few guys who actually rides his bike to work all the time. So that's, which is kind of cool. So <laughs> you don't see that often that much. <laughs> Par- partially too cheap to pay for parking, but I also live close enough to make it easy. So see, and then you can walk home if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's a it, you know, riding a bike is a good way to decompress. So decompress um, after work and it feels I, 
I don't think I could ride my bike all the way to the Rockland. I think that'd be a long. I think ride. that would be a lot more stressful than, than <laughs> relaxing. So I, you know. I haven't ridden a bike in a long time. So <laughs> Sacramento is a great bicycle town because it's primarily flat. And we also have one of the best river bike trails in the state. We have 34 miles of contiguous bike trails along the American River. Wow. It's over here, it's one of the kind of the hidden jewels of our of our city. And it's just fun to go out there in the summer and ride along the river. Not in 102 degree weather. No, no, no. <laughs> I'll go out in the spring then. The spring's fun. So we want to give it a shout out to a couple of people. Clayton Hans. I know he's probably going to be watching this. Melanie Williams and Carolyn. And so, you know, basically, like I said, the awareness is show is finally getting back on its feet. We took a hiatus. We moved up here. A lot of people have been asking me, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? When are you coming back? You know, I had to get back. situated. <laughs> official. You're back. I got my shoot back, yes. And then a shout out to Maxie, Ruben, Jackie. They're all busy right now. Um, so it's just been, we had the Oscars just past Sunday and we were just talking about that, which is one of the greatest Oscars I've seen in a long time. You know, Jamie Lynn Curtis, one of the best supporting actors, uh, Brendan Fraser, Michelle Young, you know, who knew thought? And my favorite Dana from Indiana Jones. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I'm a sucker for him. So, you know, and there's a lot of backlash because the yeah, other, Candid or awarding or candidates they didn't get nominated, so now they're getting snubbed, supposedly. So, <laughs> and then you got March Madness coming up. That's coming up. It's coming up right today. There's games at the Sacramento Arena. Uh oh. Oh no, that means traffic's gonna be hectic. <laughs> and then you got my favorite rest. Uh, you got my favorite sport coming up in April, which is WrestleMania. Yes, I watch WrestleMania. Look <laughs> like at the face you're making. <laughs> it's a tradition between me and my dad. We always watch it, and we always order pizza. Um, and so you know, we got a lot of stuff going on. A lot of concerts coming up too, King. And you know, we got Sting coming up. Wow. Hard, um, Hard Rock Club Cafe. Uh, Stevie Nicks is supposed to be coming up pretty soon. Um. Fluffy was up here in February, past um, February. Do you know who Fluffy is? Okay, no. he is one of the best funny comedians of all time, next to Bobby Collins, one of my other fun, funny comedians. Uh, so, yeah, we, I love comedy. I love, you know, sports. So, we got baseball. We got that March Madness yeah. going on. It's a we lot got, of. We got it all here in Sacramento <laughs> now. So we're no longer the, <laughs> we're destination. So we got it, and then I hope you guys have a nice weekend. Enjoy it while you can. It's gorgeous outside right now. It says it's 61 degrees, and it's St. Patty's Day. Make sure you wear your green. Don't forget yeah. to wear your green. Well, we, we appreciate you, Michelle, and um, thank you. really appreciate the opportunity here as well. So, Kaylee, if you have want to come back and talk about the tribe, we can. Always. We can always talk about other topics, so. I think yeah, this I would is. Love I would love to. So. Yes. So this was a great show. You know where to find me. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. All right. And happy birthday, Dad! Again, love you. All right. Bye. Bye.